Hey gardeners, Lindsay here with the Mindful Living Movement and today I've got kind of a pretty plant with me. Um, this one is an Alocasia adora or sometimes just called elephant ears and it's a fairly popular house plant as it's really big and it's really showy um, but I found that it's a little bit of a fussier house plant so I sort of wanted to share with you what I found to be like the sweet spot for it. Um, I've been doing some repotting and just sort of you know refresh of everything in the middle of the summer keep all the dirt out of the house and with this one it is it's a tropical plant obviously so it likes like a warm humid environment this guy does like a moderately moist soil but it'll tell you very quickly um, by yellowing leaves if you've overwatered and I find it's it's like very quick to be on the overwatered but it also doesn't like being underwatered so what I have found is that I have a very um, organic rich mixture in here. There's lots of tree bark in this, but it's also got a good helping of vermiculite and then the tree bark to just sort of give lots of aeration, but also hold lots of moisture. And it spreads by rhizomes. So you can see within this pot here, there's three rhizomes within this guy and it'll just keep putting out new ones. Um, they do grow decently quickly, but I've found that I like to sort of keep the pot a little bit on the more spacious side of things. It helps me with a bit more even watering. So I like about a 12 inch pot like this one and I like about three to be in it. This is sort of like that sweet spot that I've found. Um, I've gone more and I've gone less and I've had a really hard time keeping them happy with either. Um, I do keep it sort of off to the side of a really sunny window as well. So it, it gets a lot of bright light. Um, I actually had it underneath one of my lamps and it got a little bit burnt. It doesn't like heat, like direct sunlight or direct grow light um, touching it. That's what happened here. But it does like a really bright sort of corner. So I've got it off to the west facing window. So it's hot, it's bright, but it's not getting directly cooked by the sun. And I'll give you a look at sort of a repotting. I had over divided a few of them and then I've decided to sort of recombine a couple just to get them back into sort of what this one looks like. And otherwise it's pretty easy for feeding. I add in just like a little bit of nutrients to my watering every so often. I give it a little sprinkling of um, worm castings every so often, but I don't go too overboard with it. I just sort of lightly um, give it more nutrients and that that is sort of what I found to be the happy spot for this guy because it is really beautiful but it gets sad really quickly um, I have experienced spider mites and thrips on it as well so it is kind of prone to bugs so that is something you want to keep a really close eye out it's very obvious the leaves will start to show um, when there's problems right away currently this guy is actually thrip free which is great because those are probably the hardest ones to get rid of um, and yeah if you're interested in filling your house with more house plants with big house plants just like this one then maybe also consider them being food production plants um, there's actually some really big food production plants that you can grow inside your house that give you that beautiful greenery but also are actually something that's useful <laughs> I mean it's nice to have house plants but I'm always you know trying to produce more food for myself so join the waitlist for my indoor growing course that's going to be coming up um, pretty quick here in the fall it'll be opening up right when our season ends and yeah if you like this video hit the like button um, subscribe if you want to follow on the more houseplant and gardening journey don't miss out on more videos i hope you have a beautiful rest of the day gardeners and we'll see you again soon